Part One of Recipes for Epicures. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Clarica. Recipes for Epicures by Joel Tilden. Introductory note. Major Joseph Tilden was in his time one of the most famous Bohemians and Epicureans of the Pacific coast. Ever since his death his many friends have been trying to learn the culinary secrets which made a repast of his devising so delicious. He had given his recipes to but few, and those few his most intimate friends and fellow spirits. One of the most favored of his old companions has given this complete collection of his recipes for publication. San Francisco, May, 1907 Soups and Chowders Onion Soup Place six ounces of butter in a large saucepan over the fire, and stir into it four large white onions, cut up, not sliced. Stew this very slowly for one hour, stirring frequently to prevent its scorching. Add salt, pepper, cayenne, and about one quart of stock, and cook one hour longer. Then stir into the mixture one and one-half cups of milk, and simmer for a few minutes. Have ready a soup tureen. In it, beat the yolks of four eggs with two tablespoons of grated Parmesan cheese. Stir the hot soup into this, beating until it thickens a little. A slice of toasted French bread should be placed in each plate, and the soup poured over it. Palestine Soup Slice two or three Jerusalem artichokes and place in two quarts of boiling water. Cook for one and one-half hours, then rub the artichokes through a colander and add to them one pint of the water in which they were boiled. Stir in two tablespoonfuls of flour rubbed into the same amount of butter. Add two cups of milk and boil for ten minutes. Season with salt and pepper and serve with croutons. Black Bean Soup Soak overnight one quart of black turtle beans in water to cover them. In the morning, strain and boil them in four quarts of water for one hour, skimming frequently. Then put into the liquor two white onions sliced, two stalks of celery cut into bits, salt, pepper, cayenne, and one teaspoonful each of cloves and allspice. Boil for three hours. Remove from the stove and add enough stock to thin the mixture to the consistency of a cream soup. Pour into it nearly a tumbler of sherry and add a thinly sliced lime. Place over the fire to boil for five minutes. Just before serving, stir into the soup three hard-boiled eggs, finely chopped. Force meatballs may be added. Parker House Tomato Soup Put into a saucepan five pounds of tomatoes, either fresh or canned, with one quart of water, salt, pepper, cayenne, one and one-half tablespoonfuls of sugar, and three ounces of butter rubbed into one heaping tablespoonful of flour. Cook slowly one hour. Remove from the fire and rub through a sieve. Place over the fire again and add one and one-half tablespoonfuls of rice flour, which has been dissolved in a little water. Let it come to a boil when it is ready to serve. Celery Soup Boil one small cupful of rice in three pints of milk, or two pints of milk and one of cream, until it is tender. Then rub it through a sieve and add one quart of veal stock, salt, cayenne, and three heads of celery, the white stalks only, 
which have been previously grated. Boil until the celery is tender. Bisque of Prawns or Shrimps Boil three dozen prawns twenty minutes in salted water to cover them. Meanwhile, in two small tablespoonfuls of butter, fry an onion and a carrot sliced, and a small piece of salt pork chopped. Take the prawns out of the boiling water, and add it to the fried mixture with salt, pepper, a bunch of sweet herbs, and one-half the prawns added again. Simmer one hour. Pound the shells of the prawns in a mortar with a little butter to form a smooth paste. Stir this into the soup and boil twenty minutes. Strain through a sieve. Add one quart of milk and one teaspoonful of cornstarch stirred into a little of the cold milk. Let it boil up and serve. It should be as thick as rich cream. Lobster Soup Pick the meat from a five-pound lobster and pound it in a mortar, adding from time to time a little milk or cream. When perfectly smooth, add two teaspoonfuls of salt, one tablespoonful of chopped parsley, if liked, cayenne, and mace. Take out enough to make a dozen small balls. Mix this with the yolk of an egg and fry it in butter. Mix the rest of the pounded lobster with two quarts of milk and rub through a sieve. Put this in a saucepan and simmer ten minutes. Add two ounces of butter and stir until melted and smooth. Pour over the fried balls in the tureen and serve very hot. Venison Soup Cut six pounds of lean venison into medium-sized pieces and place in a soup kettle with two gallons of cold water, to which add two dozen cloves and four blades of mace. Boil slowly three hours. Then add two pounds of venison, cut into pieces about an inch square, and one dozen force meatballs. Boil for thirty minutes. Then season with salt, pepper, cayenne, and half a glass of lime juice, letting the soup cook ten minutes longer. It should be served in hot bowls, in each of which is poured a half glass of port before serving. Crisp croutons may be added. Puree of Venison Cut up the remains of venison that has been roasted for a former dinner. Put a few slices of ham into a stew pan, then the venison, two whole onions, a blade of mace, two quarts of stock, and a small piece of a sprig of thyme, parsley, and two cloves. Set it on the stove to simmer two hours or more. Strain it off, and pull all the meat to pieces. Pound it with the lean ham that was boiled with it, the crust of two French rolls which have been soaked in consomme. Rub the whole through a colander with a glass of claret or port, and enough consomme to bring it to the consistency of cream. Put it back on the fire in a double boiler. Stir a little butter into it, and serve with bread fried in dice. Clear Soup Stock To four pounds of beef, add six quarts of cold water, and place over the fire. Just before it boils, skim it carefully. Then add two cups of cold water and skim again, repeating this for a third skimming. Allow it to simmer slowly for three hours, then add the vegetables. Eight ounces each of cut up carrots, onions, and turnips, and three ounces of celery with salt and pepper. Simmer three hours longer. The stock should be strained before using, and while cooking it should not be allowed to boil. Daniel Webster's Chowder Fry with some slices of pork, four tablespoonfuls of sliced onions, to a light brown. 
Put them in a deep iron pot with six pounds of cod, sliced, one quart of boiled mashed potatoes, one pound and a half of broken sea biscuit, fifty oysters, one teaspoonful of thyme, one teaspoonful of summer savory, one half a bottle of mushroom ketchup, one bottle of port or claret, one half a nutmeg, one dozen cloves, a little mace and allspice, one half a lemon sliced, pepper, and salt. Cover with one inch of water and cook slowly until done. Scott's Chowder Cover the bottom of a deep pot with slices of pork cut very thin. Add a layer of fish sliced and seasoned with salt and pepper, a layer of onions parboiled and quartered, a layer of tomatoes sliced and seasoned, a layer of thickly sliced potatoes, and a layer of broken sea biscuit. Repeat the layers until the pot is filled. Just cover the fish with water and cook one hour very slowly. Add one pint of claret, cook one half hour longer, and serve. Marblehead Chowder Cut half a pound of salt pork into dice and place two-thirds of it in a deep saucepan. Fry a light brown. Remove it and in the fat fry two large onions sliced. Cover the bottom of the pot with slices of raw cod or bass mixed with some of the fried pork and onions. On this place another layer of sliced fish mixed with a few pieces of raw pork and slices of raw onion, salt, and pepper. Over this a layer of sliced raw potatoes. Repeat these layers until the pot is about two-thirds full, when the mixture should be covered with warm water, or preferably a stock made of the heads and tails of the fish. After the chowder comes to a boil, let it cook for 45 minutes. Then add some broken sea biscuit and boil 15 minutes longer. In another saucepan, place a quart of milk and heat it to the boiling point. Then stir into it two ounces of flour rubbed into two ounces of butter. When it thickens a little, pour it over the chowder and serve. The recipe will take about four pounds of fish, half a pound of pork, six onions, six potatoes, four sea biscuits, two ounces each of butter and flour, and a quart of milk. Clam Chowder 1 Have 100 clams still in the shell. Boil them in a quart of water until the shells open. Take the clams out of the kettle, saving the water in which they were boiled. Remove them from the shells, discarding all but the soft part. Take six slices of salt pork and cut into dice. Fry until crisp and a light brown. Remove from the saucepan and in the fat fry four onions sliced. Then add the water strained from the clams and the fried pork. To this add six potatoes cut in small pieces and two green peppers chopped or finely sliced. Boil the mixture 15 minutes before putting in the clams and four sea biscuits, broken into pieces. Then boil for 15 minutes longer and add a quart of milk. Have half a cup of bread crumbs rubbed into four ounces of butter. Stir this in as the chowder heats after the milk has been added. When it boils, it is ready to serve. Clam Chowder 2 in a saucepan, fry two slices of salt pork, and when brown, add four potatoes and four onions cut up. Fry ten minutes, and add three pints of water, salt, and pepper. Boil for half an hour. Then add one quart of clams, from which the tough portions have been removed. Also two sea biscuits, which have been soaked until they are soft. Cook ten minutes. For this recipe, 
Canned clams may be used. Force meatballs for chowder. Take the meat of a good-sized crab, a tumbler full of shrimps, and a clove of garlic. Chop all very fine and make into small force meatballs with a beaten egg. Fry them a light brown in butter and serve in any fish chowder or soup. End of part one. Part two of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Fish. Oysters a la Marachal. Stew very gently in four ounces of butter some thinly sliced truffles and mushrooms. After cooking ten minutes, add salt, white pepper, cayenne, and mace. Stir in four large tablespoonfuls of flour and mix well together while it thickens. Put in the liquor of the oysters which has been scalded and skimmed. Then add milk, boiling, enough to make it as thick as cream. Take from the fire and stir in the yolks of four eggs beaten well with the juice of a lime and a tablespoonful of water. Cover each oyster thickly with some of the mixture and allow it to cool. Then roll twice in beaten egg and bread crumbs. Fry to a light brown in butter and serve very hot. Toasted Angels Sprinkle cayenne and a few drops of lime juice over as many large oysters as are required. Then wrap each oyster in a thin strip of bacon or fat salt pork. Fasten with a wooden toothpick and broil until the bacon is crisp. Serve very hot on squares of buttered toast. Oyster Pâtés Rub together one ounce of butter and one teaspoonful of flour. Melt this in a saucepan and add salt, mace, and cayenne. Stir gently a few minutes until smooth. Then add slowly four tablespoonfuls of cream. Strain two dozen oysters and add the liquor very slowly, stirring all the time. When it boils up, put in the oysters, cook three minutes, and fill the pate shells. Serve very hot. Scalloped Clams Wash clean one hundred clams. Use soft part whole and the tough part chopped fine. Put a layer on the bottom of a buttered baking dish. Season with salt, pepper, cayenne, and a little mace, and sprinkle over plenty of stale breadcrumbs and a quantity of bits of butter. Repeat the layers until the dish is full. Put plenty of butter on top and pour in a cup of the water from the clams. Bake in a moderate oven one hour, and when half done, pour in a tumbler full of cherry. Shrimp or Oyster Curry Melt four ounces of butter and fry in it four young onions and a clove of garlic chopped. Add the juice of two limes. Stir into this one teaspoonful of cornstarch two tablespoonfuls of curry powder, and half a cup of cream with salt, pepper, and cayenne. Stir this rapidly over the fire until very thick. Thin with milk until it is the proper consistency, then add a large cup of picked shrimps and as many oysters. Cook two minutes after it boils. Shrimp a la Bordelaise Place two tablespoonfuls of butter and one of flour in a saucepan and brown over the fire. Stir into this one cup of stock and add two tablespoonfuls of finely chopped raw ham, a slice of onion, one tablespoonful of chopped parsley. Simmer for ten or fifteen minutes. Strain the same and add to it a cup of shrimps. 
Simmer again for a few moments and add a teaspoonful of tomato or mushroom ketchup. Season with salt and pepper and serve in timbal cases. Shrimps with tomato. Stew half a dozen large tomatoes with a tablespoonful of anchovy sauce, a piece of butter, salt, pepper, and cayenne. Put this through a sieve until it is very smooth. Fill a baking dish with picked shrimps, pour the tomato over them, sprinkle with breadcrumbs and bits of butter, and bake until brown. Sauté of Shrimps Melt a piece of butter in a stew pan with a little flour, salt, and cayenne. Just as it turns dark, put in a glass of white wine, a pound of picked shrimps, a little lemon juice, and, if liked, a bit of anchovy sauce. Take from the fire and stir in the well-beaten yolks of two eggs. Pour into cup-shaped pieces of fried bread and serve very hot. Crab a la Creole Fry in four ounces of butter, four young onions, one clove of garlic, and two green peppers, all chopped fine. Cook until soft and add one tomato cut up, salt, pepper, and cayenne. Stew until smooth and add one teaspoonful of flour, a little cream or rich milk, and the meat picked from two crabs. Boil a few moments and serve with buttered toast. Sole a la Normandy Take a large sole, one without a row. Remove the back skin and with a sharp knife very carefully cut out the side fins. Lay it on the dish in which it is to be served, one that may be placed in the oven. Brush the fish with melted butter. Insert in the flesh of the fish some small slices of truffle. Sprinkle it with salt, white pepper, a very little mace, and dust it all over with fine crumbs. Pour around it a tumbler of good white wine. Place in a moderate oven and cook until nearly done, twenty minutes or longer, if the fish be large. Take it out and put around the edge of the dish a row of croutons, brushing them with the white of an egg to make them adhere to the dish. Then scatter over and around the fish a small can of mushrooms, sliced, oysters, mussels, picked shrimps, and some quenelles. Add a little more melted butter and a few more crumbs. Add more white wine and put back in the oven for five minutes. Filet of Sole a la Bohemian Cut a sole or flounder into four fillets. Roll each one up, stuffing with a mixture of sal piquant sauce. Roll around each a thin slice of pork and fasten with a skewer. Stand on end in a baking pan and put a small piece of butter and a slice of lemon on each and bake until done. Fry together for five minutes chopped shallots, parsley, chervil, herbs, butter, salt, and cayenne. Take from the fire and stir in a little lime juice and anchovy sauce. Baked sole. Skin the slack side of the fish and lay in a baking pan. Brush with beaten egg, sprinkle with bread crumbs, and pour over them some melted butter. Cover the fish with a layer of thin slices of pork or bacon. Add one half pint of water and bake half an hour. To make the sauce, take the liquor from the baking pan, add to it salt, pepper, cayenne, the juice of one lime, a wine glass of sherry, a tablespoonful of mushroom or walnut ketchup, and a piece of butter the size of an egg with a little flour rubbed into it. Allow it to boil once and pour over the fish. Flounders a la Magouze Place several fish into a baking pan with a glass of white wine, 
salt, pepper, and an ounce of butter. While they are cooking, break three eggs into half a pint of cream and beat until it is light. When the fish is done, remove them from the pan and stir the eggs and cream into the gravy. Simmer for two minutes and pour over the fish, serving at once. Salmon a la Melville Put slices of salmon into a baking pan with a little white wine and water. Sprinkle with salt and bits of butter. Place in the oven and bake for 15 minutes. For a sauce, blanch some very finely chopped young onions. Put them in a saucepan with a wine glass of white wine, salt, cayenne, a cup of picked shrimps, a lemon cut in thin slices, and a tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce. Then add a piece of butter the size of a walnut, rolled in a very little flour. Remove from the fire and stir in the yolks of two eggs. Pour the sauce over the fish and serve. Stewed Haddock Lay pieces of fish in a pan with the skin side up. Sprinkle with salt and cayenne and cover tightly, allowing the fish to stew in its juice for 20 minutes. Then add a quarter of a pound of butter rolled in flour and a quarter of a glass of wine. Stir the liquor and simmer for a few minutes when it is ready to serve. No water should be used. Bacalas a la Viscana Soak half a salt codfish overnight. Put in a saucepan one half cup of olive oil and two large onions cut in bits. When browned, add two large tomatoes cut up. Stew slowly for 15 minutes, adding a little black pepper. Put in the fish picked to pieces and cook slowly half an hour. Serve on a platter with some fried whole green peppers on top. Baked Sardines Remove the skins from large boned sardines and heat in the oven on strips of toast. Make a sauce as follows. Pour the oil from the sardines into a saucepan and heat it well. Then stir in an ounce of flour, adding a small cup of hot water. Season this with a teaspoonful of Worcestershire sauce, salt, and paprika. Beat the yolk of an egg with a teaspoonful of vinegar and one of mustard. Stir this into the sauce after it is removed from the fire. Pour over the sardines and serve. Sardines with Cheese Drain the sardines and lay them on strips of toast or crisply fried bread. Cover thickly with Parmesan cheese and bake in a hot oven until light brown in color. Remove and sprinkle with chopped parsley and pour over all plenty of lemon juice. Serve very hot. Scalloped Fish Roe Boil three large roes in water with a very little vinegar for ten minutes. Remove from the fire and plunge into cold water. Wipe the roe dry and break into bits without crushing. Have ready the yolks of three hard-boiled eggs. Mash them into a cup of drawn butter with salt, pepper, chopped parsley, a teaspoonful of anchovy paste, the juice of half a lemon, and a cup of breadcrumbs. Mix very lightly with the broken fish roe. Place in a baking dish, cover with bread crumbs and bits of butter, and brown in the oven. Kedgeri Boil two tablespoonfuls of rice and drain it as dry as possible. Have ready a cupful of cooked fish of any sort broken into pieces. Mix it thoroughly with the rice and heat over the fire. Season with salt and pepper. Beat an egg lightly and stir into it. Serve at once. Bouillabaisse The fish used for bouillabaisse may be any kind of firm white fish, 
and for the following recipe about two pounds are required. Heat in a soup kettle four tablespoonfuls of olive oil and fry in it two large onions sliced and two cloves of garlic. Add the fish cut into bits and just cover the mixture with warm water. Then add salt, pepper, half of a bay leaf, two large tomatoes peeled and chopped, the juice of half a lemon, and one cup of white wine. Cook over a brisk fire twelve minutes, or until the liquor is reduced one-third. Add one tablespoonful of chopped parsley and a pinch of saffron. Cook two minutes. Pour the bouillabaisse over slices of French bread. End of part two. Part three of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Entrees Sweetbreads with Mushrooms. Lay half a dozen sweetbreads in cold water for twelve hours, changing the water several times. Then boil them five minutes, drop into cold water, remove the skin, and lard with fat bacon. Put them in a saucepan with a pint of stock, two small onions, and one carrot chopped, a teaspoonful of minced parsley, salt, pepper, cayenne, and a little mace. Stew until tender. Serve with a mushroom sauce made as follows. Take a small bottle of mushrooms or one dozen fresh mushrooms, sliced, and boil them five minutes in water and lime juice. Drain and place in a stew pan with two ounces of butter, one ounce of flour, and a pint of well-seasoned stock or gravy. Cook until the sauce is reduced one half. Pour over the hot sweetbreads. Terrapin Boil the terrapin for one hour and clean carefully. Rub into a paste the yolks of six hard-boiled eggs, half the white of one egg chopped, one tablespoonful of butter, one teaspoonful of flour, three whole cloves, salt, pepper, cayenne, and mace. Place the terrapin into a stew pan with a glass of sherry or Madeira and the prepared paste. Cook slowly for 20 minutes. Add three glasses of sherry and Madeira and allow it to boil once when it is ready to serve. Frogs a la poulette. Joint the hind legs and backs of 12 frogs Put in a closely covered saucepan with some truffles, a small can of mushrooms sliced, a glass of white wine, salt, white pepper, cayenne, mace, and four ounces of butter. Stew gently fifteen minutes, stirring once or twice. If then tender, add one teaspoonful cornstarch, rubbed into one ounce of butter. Let it cook two minutes, take from the fire, and stir in the yolks of six eggs, beaten well with one half cup of cream. Place this mixture where it will keep hot without cooking. Cut the crust from a loaf of bread, scoop out the center, brush with butter, and brown in the oven. Pour the frog's legs and sauce into the bread cup, Garnish with mushrooms and truffles. Calf's Head on Tortue Simmer a calf's head for two hours. Tie the brains in a cloth, put them in the saucepan with the head, and cook two hours longer. Then extract the bones and cut the meat in pieces. Return it to the saucepan without the brains, adding two ounces of butter, two dozen stoned olives, one dozen cloves, salt, pepper, cayenne, and a cup of white wine. Cook for one hour, then add the brains cut in bits, the shaved peel and piece of one lemon, 
and three hard-boiled eggs sliced. Cook 30 minutes. Thicken the sauce with flour rubbed into butter and serve with the calf's head. Chops a la rain. Trim 12 lamb chops very closely and fry lightly in 6 ounces of butter. Remove them and in the same butter place 2 onions sliced, 4 green peppers minced, 1 can of mushrooms minced, and 2 stalks of celery chopped, salt, pepper, cayenne, and the juice of a lime. Cook until these ingredients are soft. Stir in 6 ounces of flour. Then add two cups of milk and cook until the mixture is thick and smooth. Dust a plate with cracker crumbs, and on this place a spoonful of the fried mixture. Place a chop on top of this, cover it with another spoonful of the mixture, and dust with cracker crumbs. Repeat with each chop, and, when cold, roll each in beaten egg and cracker crumbs, and fry a light brown. Calves Feet a la Marshal Boil four calves feet until tender. Cut into inch pieces and fry in four ounces of butter with two onions, a little garlic, two green peppers, and some mushrooms chopped fine, seasoning all with salt, pepper, cayenne, and a little mace. Stir in four ounces of flour and add boiling milk, enough to make the texture as thick as rich cream. Put in the calves' feet and mix all well together. Then remove from the fire and beat in the yolks of two eggs which have been mixed with the juice of a lime and a tablespoonful of water. Pour the whole into a buttered pan and set aside to cool. When cold, cut into slices, brush with egg and bread crumbs, and fry in butter until a light brown. Puree of Chestnuts with Chops Boil chestnuts in salted water for 20 minutes. Shell them, season with salt and pepper, add a piece of butter and wet with milk. Mash through a colander and heap lightly on a platter, arranging broiled chops around the puree. Lamb Chops a la Nesselrode Trim carefully one dozen young lamb chops. Fry in butter three tablespoonfuls of marrow, some chopped mushrooms and shallots. Then add a glass of sherry and stir it well before adding also a cup of rice, four cups of stock, several sweet chili peppers chopped, and some salt. Cook for half an hour or until pasty. Pour it out in a pan to the thickness of a half an inch, and let cool. Then, with a biscuit cutter, cut it into rounds about the size of a chop. On each one of these rounds, place a chop, and cover the top with bechamel sauce. When cold, dip in egg and bread crumbs, and fry a light brown. A good recipe for the bechamel sauce is the following. One ounce of butter browned with one ounce of flour. To this, add half a glass of sherry, some finely chopped truffles, one cup and a half of stock, salt and pepper, and cook for ten minutes. Add the juice of a lime. Take from the fire and stir in the well-beaten yolks of two eggs. Devil Chops Make a dressing of the following ingredients mixed together. One ounce of butter, one teaspoonful of made mustard, one half teaspoonful of French mustard, one teaspoonful of grated horseradish, one teaspoonful of chutney, a little chili vinegar, the juice of one lime, salt, pepper, and cayenne. Rub this on the chops and broil rare. Serve the remaining sauce over them in a very hot dish. Lamb Cutlets Duchess Fry one dozen lamb chops in butter 
and set aside to cool. Put in a stew pan two ounces of butter with half a can of mushrooms, one small onion, and a teaspoonful of parsley, all minced fine. Salt, pepper, cayenne, and a little mace. Cook this gently for ten minutes and add a cup of milk thickened with flour and butter, the juice of a lemon, and one teaspoonful of sugar. Cook a few minutes. Take from the fire and add the yolks of four eggs well beaten. Cover the chops with this and set aside to cool. Brush them with the well beaten yolk of an egg, sprinkle with fine bread crumbs, and fry in butter to a light brown. Serve with green peas in the center of the dish. Lamb Cutlets a la Condi Lard lamb cutlets with strips of truffle, anchovy, and gherkin. Make a dressing of bread crumbs, mushrooms, capers, chives, a little shallot chopped very fine, pepper, salt, and butter. Put this on each side of the cutlets and cover with crepinette. Broil or fry to a light brown and dust over with very fine browned bread crumbs. Serve with a browned veal gravy and sliced lemon. Eggs with tomatoes. Fry in two ounces of butter two small dry onions and two green peppers chopped. Add half a dozen tomatoes peeled and cut up, salt and pepper. Simmer fifteen minutes. Add the corn cut from half a dozen ears and cook fifteen minutes longer. Pour the mixture into a baking dish and break over it six eggs. Place in the oven until set. Macaroni a la Rossini Cook a pint or less of macaroni in well-salted water. Drain and put into a stew pan with a little good gravy. Simmer very slowly until the gravy is all absorbed, shaking the pan occasionally. Put a layer of the macaroni in a baking dish. Sprinkle with grated Parmesan cheese and sliced truffles mixed with a little good sauce espagnole. Fill the dish and on the top layer put truffles. Place in the oven a few minutes and serve with grated Parmesan cheese on a separate dish. Timbal of macaroni for twelve persons. Boil one half pound of macaroni in water for five minutes. Cut in inch length pieces and simmer for twenty minutes in one quart of milk, being careful that it does not boil. Season with salt, pepper, mace, and cayenne. Add one cup of cream, stir until very smooth. Add the beaten yolks of eight eggs and one can of mushrooms sliced. Stir well and then add the macaroni with one pound of sweetbreads, cut in small pieces, and two dozen eastern oysters. Let this cool, then cover with pastry, and bake in the oven until brown. End of part three. Part Four of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Chicken and Game. Chicken Portuguese. Truss two young chickens as though for roasting. Lay on the bottom of a large stew pan the rind of a piece of pork, and on this place the chicken. Add four ounces of butter, a head of celery, chopped, two onions sliced, three small carrots sliced, two chili peppers cut up, and the halves of two bell peppers from which the seeds have been removed. Season with salt, cayenne, thyme, and a few sweet herbs. Cover and cook quickly for forty minutes moistening from time to time with a spoonful of stock or gravy. Then add two large tomatoes sliced and cook 20 minutes longer. 
Serve the chicken with the sauce poured over it. Chicken with Oysters Stuff a young chicken with oyster and a few breadcrumbs, seasoned with salt, pepper, and butter. Truss the fowl. Place it in a tin pail with a tight cover. Stand the pail in a kettle of boiling water and leave on the fire one hour and a half. Remove the chicken and place in a dish. Pour the gravy into a saucepan, adding two dozen oysters, two hard-boiled eggs, chopped, a wine glass of cream, and one ounce of butter, into which has been rubbed a teaspoonful of cornstarch. Boil for a few minutes and pour over the chicken. This is an excellent way to cook a young turkey. Casuela Cut a chicken into small pieces and fry it with a clove of garlic in a large tablespoonful of lard for ten minutes. Then add one quart of water, half a cupful each of green peas, string beans, and grains of corn, and boil one and one-half hours. Add three potatoes cut into bits, one tablespoonful of rice, salt, pepper, and the white of one egg. Boil for three quarters of an hour longer, then remove from the fire. In a tureen, mix one mashed potato with the yolk of the egg and a tablespoonful of vinegar. Strain the broth slowly into this and mix thoroughly before adding the chicken and other ingredients. Fried Chicken, Maryland Style Cut up a chicken and season with salt, pepper, and a little mace. Dip the pieces into beaten egg, then roll in flour and fry in lard and butter until brown. Take out the chicken and in the pan put a large piece of butter with a little flour. As soon as it froths up, stir in milk until thick. Let it boil a minute and pour over the chicken. Chicken with Rice Cut up a chicken and stew gently for ten minutes in a little water. Add two ounces of butter, salt, pepper, mace, and a green pepper, chopped very fine. Stew until done. Make a form of boiled rice around a dish and lay the chicken in the middle of it. Add to the sauce a good piece of butter with a teaspoonful of flour rubbed into it and boil two minutes. Take from the fire and stir in the yolk of three eggs beaten with a half cup of rich cream. Pour over the chicken and serve. Chicken with Spaghetti Prepare the spaghetti by boiling about three pounds in salted water for twenty minutes. Stew a chicken in water until tender and pick it to pieces, adding enough of the gravy to make a quart. Into this put four sliced onions that have been fried in two ounces of butter and one quart of tomatoes. Stew for fifteen minutes. Place a layer of spaghetti on a platter and sprinkle with grated Parmesan cheese. Pour over some of the chicken sauce and repeat the layers, putting the best of the chicken on top. Quail with Celery Cut six quail in halves and cover them with water in a stew pan, adding strips of salt pork, some finely chopped celery, salt, and pepper. Cook until done. Remove the birds and strain the liquor. Add to it two ounces of flour rubbed into two ounces of butter, the remainder of the head of celery grated, and two cups of milk. When it thickens, pour over the birds and serve very hot. Pheasant a la Savarine Place on the bottom of a roasting pan two slices of bread cut two inches thick. Spread over this the pounded liver and heart of the bird with an anchovy, a bit of ham, and two truffles minced. On this lay the pheasant and roast until done. Serve on the cooked bread. Nothing but the finest burgundy should be served with this. Quail and Onion 
To each quail allow one good-sized onion, sliced, and half a glass each of oil and vinegar. Stew in a covered pot until the birds are tender. Season with salt and pepper, and serve with any good sauce. Salmi of Duck with Olives Roast for eight minutes two sprig-tail ducks. Take out and cut the meat from the bones. Break up the bones. Cover with water in a saucepan and cook with a dozen cloves, one onion, and some chopped celery to make a gravy. When done, strain it off. To this gravy add the meat, two ounces of butter, salt, pepper, cayenne, one half head of celery cut in strips, one teaspoonful of currant jelly, and one dozen stoned olives. Cook gently ten minutes, stirring it well until smooth. Add a piece of butter rolled in brown flour. Stew five minutes and serve very hot. Stewed Squabs Make a stuffing of the livers and hearts of six birds chopped fine, with a little butter, chopped pork, the yolk of an egg, salt, cayenne, and a little lemon. Stuff the squabs with the above. Put them in a stew pan and cover with stock and stew one half hour. Take out the birds, add salt, cayenne, three tablespoonfuls of mushroom ketchup, one tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoonful of lime juice, a large glass of port or sherry, and two ounces of butter mixed with three tablespoonfuls of browned flour. Return the birds to the sauce for ten minutes. Fry some thick slices of bread, place a bird on each, and pour the sauce over them. End of part four. Part five of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Meats. Yorkshire Steaks Fry in butter several small tenderloin steaks with two onions sliced and one cucumber sliced. When well browned, add a pint of stock, salt, pepper, and cayenne, and one teaspoonful of made mustard. Simmer an hour or longer. Filet of Beef a la Rossini Braise a larded filet of beef with what vegetables are in season. Put in a saucepan and moisten while cooking with a bottle of good claret or sherry. When done, garnish the meat with macaroni prepared as follows. Boil one half pound of macaroni, cut into three inch lengths, and put in a saucepan with some sliced mushrooms, one half pint of good stock, three ounces of grated Parmesan cheese, and a pat of butter. Season with salt and pepper. Toss over the fire until well mixed, and serve around the beef. Strain the vegetables out of the gravy and pour over the beef. Yorkshire Pudding This is to be served with roast beef, and it should be baked in the pan of drippings in which the beef is cooked. Mix a cup of flour with a cup of milk, salt, and one egg beaten. Bake quickly and serve at once. Cold Roast Beef Stewed Cut the remains of a cold roast into pieces. Flour the pieces and fry in butter until brown. Then put them into a saucepan with a cup of stock, a glass of port, salt, pepper, and cayenne. Simmer five minutes and add one tablespoonful of lime juice before serving. Lobscouse. Soak four thick slices of corned beef in fresh water for two hours. Fry four slices of salt pork or bacon. In the fat, fry four sliced onions to a light brown. Place in a stewpan the beef, onions, and pork or bacon. 
Add a dozen sliced potatoes, cover with water, and season highly with pepper. Cover and stew gently until the meat is tender. Then break into the stew pan four sea biscuits. Cook for five minutes longer. The liquor may be thickened a little more with a tablespoonful of flour mixed with a little cold water. Perchero. Place five pounds of beef in a large pot half filled with water. Boil for three hours, having seasoned well with salt and pepper. Then add a large piece of pumpkin cut in pieces, a pint of string beans, a cup of corn, a large onion sliced, a carrot and a turnip diced, and a bell pepper minced. Simmer for half an hour. Then add half a cup of rice and one teaspoonful of saffron. Cook for half an hour longer. In another saucepan boil a cabbage, and in a third pan stew some peeled apples and bananas cut up. Put the meat in the center of a platter and place the mixed fruits and vegetables around it. Stewed cold mutton or beef. Place in a saucepan three onions sliced, a carrot and a potato diced, salt, pepper, a teaspoonful of lime juice or vinegar, with thin slices of cold meat. Cover closely and simmer for one hour. Add half a cup of cold water and simmer one hour longer. Season with a tablespoonful of Worcestershire and thicken the gravy with an ounce of flour rubbed into butter. Lamb with Macaroni Cover the bottom of a baking pan with slices of bacon. Place on them a breast of young lamb and cover it with slices of bacon and thin slices of a peeled lemon. Season with salt and pepper. Add a small onion minced and a cup of stock. Cover and bake slowly for two hours. Boil half a cup of macaroni in gravy to which a few peeled tomatoes may be added. When tender, place it on a serving dish, lay the lamb on it, and pour over all the gravy which may be thickened with a little flour. Stewed Fresh Tongue Soak a fresh tongue in cold water for one hour, then boil it three hours and remove the skin. Place the tongue in a stew pan with half a head of celery, one turnip, one carrot and two onions cut in small pieces, one dozen cloves, salt, and cayenne. Simmer for one and one-half hours. Take out the tongue and add to the gravy one tablespoonful of made mustard, one of Worcestershire sauce, three tablespoonfuls of mushroom ketchup, three pickled gherkins chopped, one glass of port or red wine, and two ounces of butter, creamed with three ounces of browned flour. Cook until smooth. Return the tongue to the sauce and simmer half an hour. Pork Pie Cut into small pieces enough pork to fill a baking dish. Season it with salt, pepper, and mace. Use no water. Cover the meat with a thick pastry crust and bake in a slow oven for two hours. Make a gravy of the bones and scraps of the pork, well seasoned, and pour into the pie after it is baked. To barbecue a pig, very old dish. Dress a pig of ten weeks old as if to roast. Make a stuffing of the liver, two anchovies, and sage leaves all chopped small. Bread crumbs, four ounces of butter, salt, cayenne, and a half pint of red wine. Stuff and sew the pig up. Roast at an open fire. Put in the dripping pan three bottles or more of red wine. Baste the pig frequently, and when almost done, Put in the pan close to the fire two loaves of bread. Stand the pig in the dish for serving and put a lemon in his mouth. 
Place one of the loaves of bread on each side. To the gravy in the pan add one anchovy, one half lemon, and a few sweet herbs, all chopped fine. Boil it a few minutes and pour over the pig. Lay slices of lemon and barberries around the dish. To boil a ham. Soak a ham for one hour and clean with a brush. Put it in a kettle with plenty of cold water, and after it boils, cook seven hours. Skim well and always replenish with boiling water. After it has boiled three hours, add half a handful of whole cloves, and at the end of five hours, add one and a half pints of vinegar. After boiling, skin the ham, sprinkle it with crumbs, stick with cloves, and roast in a moderate oven thirty minutes, basting with a liquor of half vinegar and half water. Mexican Tripe Dip a thick honeycomb piece of tripe in butter, then in crumbs, and broil over a clear fire until well done, sprinkling over it whilst cooking three or four finely chopped green chilies. Melt in a hot soup plate one ounce of butter, adding salt, pepper, and cayenne, and one teaspoonful of made mustard. Rub smooth and add one half teaspoonful of vinegar, one tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce, and the juice of one small lime. Lay the tripe in this sauce as soon as it is removed from the fire. Serve with buttered toast. An excellent prelude to this dish is a plate of onion soup. Spanish Bacon on Toast Fry a crisp brown twelve slices of bacon. Remove the bacon from the frying pan, leaving some of the fat. Into this stir two tablespoonfuls of flour and a cup of milk, a small onion minced and a dash of pepper. Cook until it is smooth. Have six slices of toast ready. On each, place two slices of the fried bacon, and on each a slice of raw tomato. Pour the sauce over the toast, and bacon, and tomato, and serve very hot. End of part five. Part six of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Sauces. Sauce for canvas back duck. Melt together in a hot soup plate, one ounce of butter, and an equal amount of currant jelly. Add the juice of a lime, a glass of sherry, and a small cupful of finely chopped celery. Season with salt, pepper, and cayenne. Sauce for wild fowl. Take one shallot chopped, salt, cayenne, mace, a glass of port or claret, one tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce, one tablespoonful of mushroom ketchup, the rind of one half lime, and one tablespoonful of lime juice. Boil these ingredients for five minutes. Strain the liquor and add to any gravy. Hollandaise Sauce Heat a bowl with boiling water and wipe dry. In it, beat quarter of a cup of butter to a cream. Add the yolks of two raw eggs, one at a time, beating until smooth. Then add a tablespoonful of lemon juice, salt and cayenne, and beat the mixture with a fork or an egg beater for five minutes. Place the bowl in boiling water. Stir into the sauce two tablespoonfuls of boiling water, and beat until the sauce is smooth and thick as mayonnaise. Parsley Butter Beat three tablespoonfuls of butter to a cream. Add half a tablespoonful of lemon juice and one of chopped parsley, half a teaspoonful of salt. Beat all together several minutes when it is ready for use. An excellent dressing for fried or boiled fish. Green Sauce 
Mix in a bowl a tablespoonful each of finely chopped parsley and onion, with one tablespoonful of tarragon vinegar and one of cider vinegar. Season with salt, pepper, and cayenne. Egg sauce. Beat two ounces of butter to a froth. Mix into it one tablespoonful of flour and the yolk of one egg. Pour a cup of hot water in this batter, stirring constantly. Heat over the fire until it is thick and smooth, but be careful not to boil. Just before serving, stir in two hard-boiled eggs, finely chopped. Celery Sauce Put in a stew pan with salt, cayenne, and a blade of mace, three grated heads of celery. Cover with boiling water. Boil ten minutes and drain. Return to the fire with enough veal stock to cover the celery and stew half an hour. Then add two ounces of butter rolled in flour and half a cup of cream. Shake over the fire a minute or two and serve at once. Devil for boiled ham or fowl. Put in a saucepan half a teacupful of soup stock, three ounces of butter, one teaspoonful of salt, one teaspoonful of made mustard, two teaspoonfuls of French mustard, two cloves of garlic chopped fine, one onion chopped, two green peppers, and one pickled gherkin chopped, one tomato peeled and cut up, the juice of half a lime, and half a lime cut in thin slices. Simmer for one hour, then add the following. One tablespoonful of Worcestershire sauce, one of imperial sauce, one of tarragon vinegar, two of bon goût sauce, two of mushroom ketchup, two of walnut ketchup, and two tablespoonfuls of chutney. Add half a pint of sherry and simmer for 15 minutes. This will keep several months. Onion sauce. Boil three good-sized onions one hour. Drain and put in a stew pan with one half pint of milk and one teaspoonful of salt. Simmer for 15 minutes, then rub through a sieve and put back in the pan with one half pint of cream and one ounce of butter. Simmer 10 minutes and serve very hot. Garlic sauce. Rub together in a mortar until smooth, two ounces of butter, two cloves of garlic, and one teaspoonful of salt. Add a tablespoonful of lime juice and one half a pint of melted butter. Beat until light and smooth when it is ready to serve. Melted butter. Take one pint of milk and one teaspoonful of salt. When it boils, stir into it three ounces of butter, a little cayenne, and two tablespoonfuls of flour rubbed into it. Let it boil one minute and serve at once. Salad dressing without oil. Put in a double saucepan the yolks of three eggs, one teaspoonful of salt, pepper, cayenne, and one tablespoonful of dry mustard. Mix well and sift in two tablespoonfuls of flour. Add three tablespoonfuls of vinegar and four of water. Stir until quite smooth. Place over the fire, stirring continually one way. As soon as it thickens, remove from the fire and beat in three ounces of butter. Use when cool. End of part six. Part 7 of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Vegetables Asparagus au Milanese. Boil large, choice asparagus until tender. Put a layer of stalks upon the dish on which they are to be served. Sprinkle with salt, pepper, cayenne, and a little grated Parmesan cheese. 
Make three layers of this and pour over all a little melted butter. Break on top a fresh egg for each person and put in the oven until set. Serve very hot. To be served individually, six stalks may be placed on each dish, covered with cheese and an egg broken over them. Serve after placing in the oven a few moments. Corn au gratin. Score down twelve ears of boiled corn, and with the back of a knife, press out the kernels. Put them into a baking dish with a large piece of butter, salt, pepper, a finely chopped green pepper, and a tablespoonful of grated parmesan or gruyere cheese. Place in a hot oven until just browned, and serve immediately. Chanfleur au gratin Boil a large cauliflower 20 minutes in salted water. When tender, drain and put on the dish on which it is to be served. Make a sauce of 2 ounces of butter, 1 ounce of flour, and half a pint of milk, 1 ounce of grated Parmesan cheese, salt, and cayenne. Mix this well, putting in the cheese last. Pour it over the cauliflower and sprinkle more cheese over the top. Set in a hot oven until browned and serve at once. Okra Cut the stems off of young okra pods and boil in water until the seeds turn red, which should be in half an hour. Drain and toss in a pan with butter, salt, pepper, and cayenne. Potato Cream Boil six medium-sized mealy potatoes, and when soft, press them through a sieve until light and floury. Then beat into them the raw yolks of six eggs and a little milk and butter. Season with salt and pepper and sprinkle with finely chopped chervil and thyme and fine dice of fried bread before serving. Sweet Potatoes Take six good-sized sweet potatoes and boil until nearly done. Then peel them and roll in melted butter. Lay in a buttered baking pan. Sprinkle with brown sugar and bake until done. Chili Beans Take four cups of red beans, one onion, four cloves of garlic, cover with water, and cook all day in a covered saucepan. Add a little water from time to time if too dry. Cook slowly four red peppers and five black peppers with seeds out, three black peppers with seeds, four cloves of garlic, four onions with the hearts taken out, salt, and one cup of beef stock. Rub through a sieve. Put in a saucepan four tablespoonfuls of marrow. When very hot, add the beans and then the sauce. To boil rice. Have plenty of salted water with the juice of a lime in it. When boiling, add rice that has been washed in three waters. Boil fast for 16 minutes. Try a grain, and if done, dash in a glass of cold water. Drain it once through a colander. Cover with a cloth and let stand by the fire for a few minutes shaking up the colander once or twice. This will make every grain separate. Risotto Fry two chopped onions in butter until light brown in color. Add one cup of raw rice and cover with beef stock. As the rice absorbs the stock, add more until done. Then add two large tomatoes stewed with a little sugar and highly seasoned. Place on the dish for serving and grate Parmesan cheese over it. End of part seven. Part eight of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica.
Salads Club Salad Boil separately two carrots, two turnips, and four potatoes. When cold, cut the vegetables into dice and mix them together, adding three apples peeled and cut into small bits. Toss in a large salad bowl with several olives for garnish. Bits of celery or cold cauliflower may be added. Pour over all a mayonnaise, or if preferred, a French dressing. Another dressing that is excellent with this salad is one made of the yolks of four raw eggs beaten into half a glass of rich cream, which may be either sweet or sour. To this, add one teaspoonful of salt, one of mustard, and a wine glass full of vinegar, blending carefully. Winter Salad Cut the white stalks of a head of celery into small bits. Mix with two boiled potatoes cut in dice, two or three boiled beets cut in dice, a large white onion boiled and cut up, some chopped truffles, anchovies, and stoned olives, a tablespoonful or more of each. Serve with mayonnaise. Cheese straws to serve with salad. Make a paste of two ounces of grated Parmesan cheese, two ounces of flour, two ounces of butter, the yolk of one egg, salt, and cayenne. Roll out the paste until about one-eighth of an inch thick. Cut into very narrow strips and place on a buttered tin. Bake ten minutes in a hot oven. End of part eight. Part nine of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Desserts and Cakes. Mince Meat. Measure carefully and mix together the following ingredients two pounds of roast beef, finely chopped, two pounds of chopped beef suet. Two pounds of chopped peeled apples, two pounds of seeded raisins, two pounds sultana raisins, two pounds of washed currants, two pounds of white sugar, one pound of citron cut in bits, one pound of dried orange peel, two nutmegs grated, three teaspoonfuls of ground mace. Three teaspoonfuls of ground cloves, three teaspoonfuls of ground cinnamon, one teaspoonful of salt, the grated rind and juice of two oranges, one quart of brandy, one quart of sherry, and one glass of blackberry jelly. After mixing thoroughly, place the mincemeat in a stone jar and use it from this. Hot Zabajon. Beat well together the yolks of six eggs and half a cup of sugar. Heat in a double saucepan, being careful to stir only one way. Place in a strainer the shaved peel of three oranges. Through this, pour slowly into the eggs a quart of champagne. White wine may be substituted, and allow the mixture to thicken. Serve hot in champagne glasses. Frozen Zabajon Mix the same as for hot Zabajon, adding another half cup of sugar and a tablespoonful of orange juice. When it is cold, half freeze in a freezer. Then remove and place in paper cases or molds on the ice. Genoise Pastry Beat to a cream half a cup of butter and half a cup of sugar. Break into the cream three eggs, one at a time, and mix until smooth. Stir in half a cup of flour. Pour on a buttered tin and bake ten or fifteen minutes. When cold, spread thickly with apricot jam and cover with chocolate icing. Set in the oven a few moments 
then put aside to cool. Cut into odd shapes before serving. Omelette Souffle Beat to a cream the yolks of six eggs, four tablespoonfuls of sugar, and the grated rind of half a lemon. Whip the whites of the eggs to a stiff froth. Place in a frying pan over the fire four ounces of butter. When it is melted, mix the yolks and whites together and stir quickly into the pan. As soon as the eggs have absorbed the butter, pour them into a buttered baking dish and set in a hot oven for six or seven minutes. Serve at once. Marmalade Pudding Cream half a cup of sugar and two teaspoonfuls of butter. Beat into this the yolks of four eggs and one cup of cream or milk. Add a cup of fine bread crumbs and the beaten whites of the eggs. Then a cup of orange marmalade or some other fruit marmalade. Pour into a buttered mold and bake one hour in a moderate oven. Turn out of the mold and serve with a brandy sauce or cream. Amherst Pudding Line a baking dish with thinly rolled pie crust or puff paste. Fill with the following mixture. A small cup of butter creamed with two cups of sugar and beaten up with four or five eggs. A cupful of finely chopped apple added with the grated rind and juice of a lemon and a little water. Sprinkle with nutmeg and bake for half an hour in a moderate oven. Brown Betty Cover the bottom of a baking dish with bread crumbs, over which place a layer of thinly sliced tart apples. Sprinkle thickly with sugar and small pieces of butter, cinnamon, and nutmeg. Then cover with bread crumbs and repeat the layers until the dish is filled having a layer of crumbs sprinkled with bits of butter on top. Then pour over all three quarters of a cup of molasses, thinned with a little hot water. Bake until the apples are tender and the top is well browned. Chocolate Pudding Grate one half a pound of baker's chocolate and melt it in half a pint of hot milk. Stir into the milk also half a cup of bread crumbs, one cup of powdered sugar, and the beaten whites of six eggs. Wet a melon mold in cold water and pour the mixture into it. Boil three quarters of an hour. Serve with cream or the following sauce. Beat the yolks of six eggs very light. Heat a cup of wine and a cup of sugar until the sugar is melted. Remove from the fire and stir in the eggs quickly. Bread and Molasses Pudding Butter thickly some slices of bread and lay in a baking dish. Cover them with thick black molasses and bake slowly. The pudding should be served hot with thick cream. Baked Bananas Put into a bowl three tablespoonfuls of butter, six of sugar, and three of wine. Set the bowl in hot water to melt the butter. Peel the fruit and lay it in a baking pan. Pour over it the mixture in the bowl and bake half an hour, basting several times. Hermits Cream two cups of sugar and one cup of butter. Add three well-beaten eggs and three tablespoonfuls of milk. Sift into this six cups of flour and a teaspoonful each of cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove. Add last a cup of chopped raisins. Roll the dough out about one quarter of an inch thick, cut into small squares, and bake in a quick oven for twelve minutes. Lady Baltimore Cake Cream one pound of sugar and half a pound of butter. Beat the yolks and whites of eight eggs separately and add the beaten yolks to the butter and sugar. Stir in half a pint of milk and one pound of flour with four teaspoonfuls of baking powder. Flavor with lemon or vanilla and bake in three layers. 
For the filling, boil three cups of powdered sugar and three quarters of a cup of water for five minutes. Beat four eggs, the yolks and whites together, and into them stir the boiling syrup. Add two cups of chopped raisins and two cups of almonds, chopped and blanched. Flavor with vanilla and spread thickly between the layers of cake. Cover with white frosting. Silver Cake Beat lightly the whites of eight eggs. Cream two cups of sugar and half a cup of butter. Stir into the eggs, adding three-fourths of a cup of milk. Sift into the batter three cups of flour and one heaping teaspoonful of baking powder. Bake in a moderate oven. Gold Cake Cream a cup of sugar and three-quarters of a cup of butter. Mix into this the beaten yolk of eight eggs and half a cup of milk. Last, add one and a half cups of flour with one teaspoonful of baking powder. Bake in a long bread tin. Fig Filling for Cake Chop together one pound of dried figs and one cup of seeded raisins. Add the juice and grated rind of a lemon and sugar to taste. Pour over the mixture a cup of water and heat thoroughly, mixing it over the fire. Spread between layers of white cake. Thin Gingerbread Place in a saucepan one pint of molasses, one cup of butter, one teaspoonful of ginger, one teaspoonful of soda, and let them boil together for a moment. Then remove from the fire, and when nearly cool, stir in flour enough to make a thick batter or dough. Spread thinly on tins, and bake quickly. End of Part 9「Part Ten of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Clarica. Wine Cups and Punches. Champagne Cup One. Pour on a sliced cucumber, one pint of sherry, and one half pint of brandy. Grate the rind of two lemons over a little sugar. Add it to the mixture with the juice of one lemon and the juice of three oranges, half a pint of curacao, two bottles of seltzer, three bottles of Apollinaris, and three bottles of champagne. Sweeten to taste and ice well. Champagne Cup 2 Mix together two tablespoonfuls of sugar, the juice and shaved peel of a lemon, a few slices of cucumbers, one wine glass of curacao, one quart of Apollinaris, and one quart of champagne. Pour over a block of ice in a punch bowl. Champagne Cup 3 Rub three ounces of sugar on lemon peel, and put in a punch bowl with the juice of four lemons, one quart of Apollinaris, and one quart of Orgeat. Beat this well. Then add one pint of brandy, half a glass of Jamaica rum, and a glass of maraschino. Strain into a bowl of ice, and just before serving, pour in three quarts of champagne. Champagne Cup 4 Two tablespoonfuls of sugar rubbed on the peel of a lemon, and mixed with the juice of half a lemon, three slices of pineapple, one wine glass each of maraschino and brandy, and a quart each of Apollinaris and Champagne. Ice well. Champagne Cup 5 Rub two ounces of sugar over the peel of an orange. Mix with it the juice of an orange, two wine glasses of sherry, one wine glass of maraschino, and a quart each of Apollinaris and Champagne. Add a few slices of cucumber and plenty of ice. Hawk Cup Pour over a block of ice in a punch bowl, a wine glass of maraschino, two quarts of Apollinaris, two quarts of sparkling hock, and the juice of two lemons. Sweeten with two ounces of sugar. 
Badminton Claret Cup. Rub six lumps of sugar on a lemon. Strain the juice of the lemon over the sugar and add a glass of good sherry, two sprigs of verbena, a few slices of cucumber, and a quart of claret. Place in the bowl a large piece of ice, and when ready to serve, add a quart of sparkling mineral water. Moselle Cup Place the following ingredients in a punch bowl with a block of ice. Two ounces of sugar, the shaved peel of half an orange, three peaches sliced, a small pineapple sliced, half a dozen apricots, a wine glass of sherry, a quart of sparkling moselle, and a quart of Apollinaris. So turn cup. Pour in a punch bowl with ice, a quart each of so turn, Apollinaris, and champagne, a wine glass of chartreuse, and two tablespoonfuls of sugar. Champagne punch. In a bowl place one sliced orange, one lime sliced very thin, and the juice of another lime, one-fourth of a pineapple sliced, and one-fourth of a pound of sugar. Let stand twelve hours. Put a large block of ice in a punch bowl, add the above ingredients with a wine glass of maraschino, two tumblers of sauterne, a wine glass of raspberry syrup, and last of all, one quart of champagne. A few whole strawberries and a claret glass of benedictine may also be added. Tea Punch Slice a whole pineapple and three lemons, and place in a punch bowl with the juice only of nine other lemons. Add two pounds of sugar, and let these ingredients stand several hours. Then add one quart each of green tea, Jamaica rum, brandy, claret, a pint of curacao, and allow it to stand another hour. Then place in the punch bowl with a large block of ice, and pour in six quarts of champagne. New York Club Punch Take two pounds of lump sugar, and squeeze over it the juice of one dozen lemons, using a little of the grated rind. Let this stand three hours, then strain the syrup through two thicknesses of flannel, and set away on ice. Just before serving, add one quart each of brandy, Jamaica rum, Madeira, and water. Milk Punch Take the juice and shaved peel of two dozen lemons. Mix with five quarts of water, three pounds of loaf sugar, and six quarts of rum. Stir until the sugar is dissolved. Then add two quarts of boiling milk and allow the mixture to stand 24 hours. Then strain twice through a cloth. Apple Toddy 1 Bake slowly two dozen cored apples until done. Place in a large stone jar with eight pounds of sugar. Pour over them four gallons of boiling water and let stand for 48 hours. Then remove the apples and crush them after taking off the skins. Return the fine pulp to the jar and add one gallon of whiskey, one gallon of brandy, one gallon of peach brandy, and three pints of Jamaica rum. The toddy should stand in the covered jar for a week before being used. Apple Toddy 2 Prepare six cored apples by sticking a dozen cloves in each and baking slowly until soft. Put them in a stone jar and pour over them a toddy made of two quarts of whiskey, one quart of brandy, one pint of rum, and three cups of water. Sweeten to taste and cover closely, allowing the mixture to blend for a week before using. End of Part 10 End of Recipes for Epicures by Joe Tilden